Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my kitchen. We are still under construction here at our house, so we are gonna be filming the next couple of episodes all over my house, really anywhere we can. So welcome. All right, today, despite being in the kitchen, we are gonna be working on a sewing project. Today, we're gonna to be doing a bit of Disney bounding, which I didn't actually know what Disney bounding was until recently. Uh, my sister-in-law told me about it, and since we are going to be taking a family trip coming up soon, all the gals in the family thought it would be fun to do a bit of coordinated Disney bounding. So what are we doing? 1950s poodle skirts um, with a Disney Star Wars theme, and so that's what we'll be doing today is making a poodle skirt. Um, I recently actually started this project with them. We started making poodle skirts a day of sewing with the gals and it was so much fun. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we got to chatting and we got to having so much fun and I messed up the measurements for the poodle skirt. I forgot the golden rule of poodle skirts, which is two, four, eight. And we did the wrong waist measurements. Now, most of the time with a garment, if I do have a slip up, if I mess something up, I do my very best to attempt to work with what I've got and fix it. And so I made the waist measurement of the skirt too large and I thought, hey, I'll just gather it up and then we'll cinch it in and I'll add a really thick waistband with some lovely thick elastic and it'll be great, it'll be fine. And the more I fiddled with it, the worse it got. <laughs> I, I attempted to finish it later that night after everyone had gotten home and it just kept getting bigger and bunchier and frumpier and lumpier and it wasn't a poodle skirt at all. It was awful and I thought I just, there was no way I was going to wear that. <laughs> for our trip, for our family trip. So uh, it is a lot of fabric, and so I have taken it apart and folded it up, and I will be using that for another project. In the meantime, I have another two yards of fabric here with me today to start over, and this time we're gonna be making a few alterations to the pattern. Not only are we going to remember the golden rule of a good circle skirt, a good poodle skirt, which is two, four, eight. Um, I'm also going to be making a, a few modifications to the pattern to suit myself a little bit better. I, because we, it is getting to close to summer and when we take this family trip together, it is gonna be hot. We have chosen not to do a traditional felt wool skirt. That is traditional for poodle skirts. It's lovely, it carries a beautiful shape. And of course, because it's felted wool, you don't have to worry about hems or anything like that. Unfortunately, because it will be quite hot, we thought that it might be a little bit less comfortable. And so um, I'm going with a thick cotton twill. Uh, I decided to go with a cotton twill because it will still carry a little bit of lovely structure and shape, despite the fact that it is just a bre easy breezy cotton. And then of course, because it is a solid cotton, it will be easy and breezy and it will breathe beautifully. Um, I normally for a poodle skirt, what I have done in the past is gotten close to a hip measurement or a bust measurement if you have a large difference. You cut that as your center circle. You add an elastic waistband which nips it into your waist measurement and you don't have to worry about a single side seam, insert zipper or anything. It works beautifully. Unfortunately, uh, since I made my last poodle skirt, personally my last circle skirt, I've grown a bit. As it turns out, I have a pretty sizable difference between my waist measurement and my hip measurement, a solid 12 and a half inches or so, maybe more. Um, and while my bust measurement is slightly better, it's slightly closer to my waist measurement, it's still a bit larger and it is going to create some decent uh, gathering and puckering in at the waistline that I'm not, I'm not wanting. I don't think it will be as flattering for me. And so I've decided since I'm starting this project over from scratch, I'm gonna go ahead and cheat and put in a zipper. Uh, the other reason that I thought I would do that is because I've got a couple of zippers in my stash and oh, one of them actually matches. I didn't even have to buy it. So since it's free, I'm gonna go ahead and do a zipper to try and help minimize the amount 
uh, that the, uh, the, the width that the waste has to be and the amount of gather that might inevitably have to come at the waist. As ideally for a circle skirt, you are doing your waist measurement and then it's flowing out beautifully. So it has this gorgeous shape without creating extra bulk around the waistline or tummy. Now, if you are a gal who, who wants to add a little bit of um, bulk around your midsection, if you wanna create dimension, larger hips, et cetera, adding some gathering is gonna be great for you. Uh, however, if you already come with a little bit of heft in your lower half like I do, um, you do, you don't really need that extra bit of fabric. So I'm gonna to try to minimize the amount of fabric in and around my waist so that I just get that really beautiful traditional skirt. For this project, we are gonna need two yards of fabric, preferably 72 inches or wider um, to get a traditional length for a poodle skirt, which is a little bit longer below the knee usually. Now, if you are okay with, if you wanna make a circle skirt and you are okay with above the knee, you could probably get away with like a 54 inch. I don't think, unless you're doing something for a child or you're very short, 48 inches will probably work very well, probably not. So for this two yards of fabric, roughly 72 inches or larger, it does come all the way up to 96 in some manufacturers. If you are doing it traditionally and you don't have a large difference in inches between your hips and your waist, large elastic bands work great. And you can do the stretch and sew method around the waistband. If you have a large gap, you'll need a zipper like me, maybe even a button. We'll go through the button bin later. You'll need chalk or a chalk pen, a good um, tape measure, a good pair of scissors. I'm gonna be using my pinking shears today to prevent any fraying of the material while we are working. Um, and then you will also need the patch or your iron-on for the design at the bottom of your poodle skirt. I'm gonna be doing an iron-on, so I will print that up and show you guys in a little bit. As for now, let's go ahead and get started with the method. I'm gonna fold this out and reset the camera so you guys can see how things should be laid out in order to get that really beautiful traditional circle skirt. All right, my dears, I'm going to do my very best to keep everything in frame and remember where the lines of my frame are. So here are all of our supplies. For the moment, I'm gonna go ahead and set a few things aside. The golden rule of circle skirts, two, four, eight. Two yards of fabric folded in quarters, so, so folded with four layers. Okay, that's the goal, the first goal. So we have our two layers. The first layer, goodness me. Uh, <laughs> the first fold is gonna be long way, so you have your two yards laid out fully, and you're going to come across and fold the long ways so that you still have two yards of fabric in length. And now you've got two layers of fabric. Okay. Then once we have that, we're going to fold it in half again, but we're going to be folding it the other way so that we are taking and maintaining the, the length or the, um, the width. And now we're folding over the one layer on top of the other. So now we have one yard of fabric wide. Okay, my dears, welcome to my floor. <laughs> I was struggling a little bit to get everything into the frame when I had it up on the counter. So I just thought, why not just do this where everything's a lot easier? So let's start back over. I have two yards of fabric. I've got folded over so that I've got four layers. One, two, three, four, okay? For this, I don't think I had quite a full 72 inches. I think this might be a 64 inch bolt. And so the width, bottom width of my skirt will not be as long. So I'm actually able to eliminate about a half a yard. I won't need that, um, but we will still go ahead and use this because I, I will have a lot of things I can use it for, maybe even a pair of shorts. Now we get to the eight part. I have my waist measurement and I'm going to divide that measurement by eight and then create a circle here in the top corner. Now, I wanted my measurement to be darn close to my waist measurement, but I don't want it to be overly tight. 
And the reason is because A, I want to be able to get it on even with the zipper, and B, I want to be able to add a fairly large wide waistband at the top and knowing that the most narrow part of my waist will have that waistband and the rest will kind of fall out, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself just a few inches of, of breathing room here. So I am going to be doing 32 inch waist um, instead of my traditional or my natural 29 inch waist and that means that this measurement here will be four inches. So in order to do that, I'm gonna use my chalk and my measuring tape to create a circle skirt. I'm gonna have this right in the corner here and I'm gonna mark four inches on this side, okay? I'm gonna come over to the other side and I'm gonna go ahead and mark four inches. And now I'm gonna just make a little dotted line, four inches all the way across, making sure to keep my tape measure in the corner of my fabric. This doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but you do want it to be as close as you can. It's gonna create a nice smooth line, and that's gonna create a nice consistent circle, okay? So there's my little dotted line. Now I can take my chalk pen and connect the dots. And there's the circle I'm going to be cutting out, the four inch circle, which will become about 32 inches once we open up all of the portions of this skirt, create that diameter around. Now, the next thing we're going to do is measure our deepest point of the skirt. And it's just inside this folded line. And then we're going to create a dotted line all the way across. Now, if you have your fabric on a tufted table that you can stick a pin in the end of your tape measure or even a string on your pen and you can go like this, it will work beautifully. Um, I actually did that with the ladies over the weekend. We, one of us held the pin in the end, the other one used the string to pull the chalk pen around the fabric and golly, it was really a breeze the easiest I think I've ever done it. Unfortunately, because I am doing this on my own today, I'm going the old fashioned method and I am just gonna go low and slow and steady with my tape measure and mark it out. But hopefully with the magic of time lapse, we will make this go a lot faster. This is the real true magic of a good circle skirt. And that is that you can take, and now you can open this up. And without any necessary seams, you have a perfect circle that can turn into a beautiful, beautiful skirt. Now, this center circle may seem pretty darn small at the moment, but I would rather have this be just a little bit too small and have to take out a little bit, then have it be too big and have to create lots and lots of gathers in the center for myself. Now, the other thing that you want to remember when you look at this and you think, oh gosh, that's too, that's too small, that's not big enough, is that you're gonna have a little bit of seam allowance when you're adding things in. You know, you're gonna be losing a little bit, bit of this, and so it's going to be opening up a little bit. It's also very deceptive when it's just in a circle on the floor, as most of us aren't shaped in a perfect circle. Many of us have kind of an oblong shape. So just know that this is gonna fit you. It's gonna be beautiful as long as you do that golden rule of taking your waist or hip or bust measurement, whatever you want this circle to be, and dividing it by eight, and then using that. That's gonna get you darn close. All right, welcome back to the counter, guys, where I won't have to be crawling up and down off the floor quite as much and hopefully you can see what's happening still perfectly well. You can see this is where we cut the bottom of the circle of the skirt out and here I have this kind of odd corner shape of fabric and this is a normal off cut when you're making a circle skirt. Now the great thing about this is if you can line up this edge, now this is a factory edge which means it's definitely not going to fray so that's a benefit if I want to be able to use this and I do. What I'm going to do now is I have enough 
distance here to create a nice wide band. And I'm going to take advantage of this offcut to make my waistband. Now your waistband, you want to be to your waist measurement plus your seam allowance. Now that doesn't matter whether you are doing a stretch and sew method or if you're doing a method like me where you're adding a zipper and a button, you want this measurement to be the waist plus seam allowance. So if you'd like to do quarter inch seams, you're gonna to wanna to do your waist plus a half inch to give yourself a quarter of an inch on either side. If you prefer a half inch seam allowance, of course you'll do your waist measurement plus one inch. You get the idea, just double it up. All right, so I have this nice long strip of fabric that I'm gonna make into my waistband. Now I've got a nice clean edge. All I have to do is measure out my waist measurement plus my seam allowance. So I've got my waist measurement there. I'm gonna do my seam allowance and I'm gonna do a really deep seam allowance. I'm gonna give myself, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna give myself a little bit of extra room. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I am gonna be adding a zipper and I think I'm gonna be adding a button on the top, which means I want this waistband to overlap at the edge. So I'm gonna tuck the seams in and sew them until I will lose the quarter of an inch and quarter of an inch there, that brings me out to here. And then I'm gonna have the closure come around the waist, so this will be coming around the waist, this side will come around the waist, and I want there to be that overlap here where the button will go. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of extra wiggle room. Again, I would rather have to cut a little bit off at the end and realize I've got too much than not enough in a circumstance like this. And now if I wanted to, I could put this on here. I could thread some elastic through it. And honestly, guys, because I used pinking shears on the bottom, I could sew my poodle on and I could be done. I could be done with this skirt. I'm gonna make a few alterations because it's me. Not only am I gonna add in a zipper and make this a smoother garment, but guys, it just occurred to me that I love pockets. I mean, you know me, I think I've put pockets in every single garment I have made on my channel so far. So why should this poodle skirt be any different? Now, because this is a garment that does not have any side seams for me to slip a pocket into, I have two options for pockets. I can do a patch pocket over the top, which I don't wanna do, um, or I can go ahead and create an inset pocket I am going to do that, and I will show you guys a quick way to do that without having to cut the whole side open, okay? So what we're gonna do is we'll pretend this is actually the side seam here. We're gonna take a piece of fabric over the top, and we are going to stitch it into place, and Here, let's just give ourselves a little wedge. Okay. This is called a placket, and placket sewing is extremely popular in shirts from the 40s and 50s. And basically what happens is they are those shirts that have a beautiful flat front, but then they have like a deep cut into the center front of them without interrupting that smooth front of the shirt. The way you do it is you create this placket behind it and this is going to act as the interfacing so you're sewing it face down you stitch along the edges here and then you create the line that you're going to cut okay you trace that out now when you're sewing we'll show with dotted lines you sew in a v toward the end of the cut and up back now you've got a solid line of stitching in a shape of a V. Then you'll go in with your scissors, you'll cut down, nip the edges here, nip the corners here, and then you'll be able to flip and rotate this placket inside the garment, creating a beautiful seamless turn that will be completely finished. It will have an interfacing and everything, and it won't interrupt this solid line of the skirt. 
Now when I do it, I'm gonna be adding in my pockets on one side and I will be adding the zipper in on the other using this placket method to prevent any unsightly puckering on the lower portions of the fabric. one very short nap time and one bedtime later we have ourselves a poodle skirt now i went with this ivory color because when i was choosing what star wars themed poodle skirt and disney bounding day i wanted to have i chose leia from endor in the last of the original trilogy and so what i have chosen to put on the bottom of my poodle skirt, instead of a traditional poodle, is a very cute little Ewok. So this is all I have left to do. I'm gonna get to cutting this out. I'm gonna iron it on, and then tomorrow perhaps I'll put my hair up and we'll have a little bit of a reveal. All right, guys, and here is the final reveal of our circle skirt and of our full Disney bounding outfit. I did choose Leia of Endor, so I've got my braids, I've got my green shirt so I can be hidden in the forest, and my very cute poodle skirt with my Ewok. The poodle skirt overall turned out really great, very standard circle skirt, so it's got good movement. It's got some really great shape, very, very full skirt, and so much fun to run around in. The fabric, this cotton twill, worked really beautifully on our trip, as did the few modifications we made, including adding pockets. Very, very handy when running around with kiddos and being able to put things in them, including cameras and phones, so you can take gobs and gobs of pictures of your kiddos running around on vacation. So much fun with that. Um, overall, this was a very easy make and it's something that I encourage people to try out if you really want to try sewing. Uh, for people who aren't professional like myself, just like sewing at home, this is one of the first projects a lot of times that we do and that we can learn from and have a garment very quickly that is accessible and easy and looks great that we can be proud of. So if you are new to sewing and you want a first time project, this really can be a great one to go with. For this project, as I said, we did make a few modifications, including the pockets, as well as the waistband, which I used hook and eyes to close, and the zipper here. I used the placket method to put those in. And so you can see there are no long seams down the sides. The pockets are hidden, and I think that turned out very, very well. So I think I would do that again if I were making another circle skirt poodle skirt in the near future. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me here on my adventures. I hope you liked this Disney bounding outfit of Princess Leia from Endor with her cute little Ewok on her skirt. If you do like this video, sewing videos, or just adventure videos at home, please, please hit that like and subscribe button. I would love to have you on future adventures with me. Thank you guys so much. Bye.